from the Wearing School Brickles, and today I'm going to be talking to you about chassis design. This video is going to be in two parts. First, I'm going to tell you about our robot and everything that makes a successful chassis design, and then I'm going to show you how you can make your own design using these ideas. So before we get into it, I just want to say that I will not be supplying directions or models of any of the designs that you see in this video, because building your own chassis is a very important part of FLO. So here is our robot that we have been using for the City Shaper season called Stormageddon Mark 10 or Storm 10 for short. It is the culmination of 16 iterations of robots designed by our team over the past three years. One of the most key design features is the boxy shape, which means that it can square up on any flat surface, and it's also very easy to design attachments around. Another is the small size. In general, it's better to be smaller so your robot can fit more reliably through tight spaces, but you have to make sure that it's not too small that you start sacrificing structural integrity. This is also particularly important for City Shaper because of the small inspection area. Next are the wheels. When choosing which wheels to use, it's very important to find the sweet spot between speed and accuracy. Because of the little bit of play that LEGO motors always have, there will always be a little bit of inaccuracy in the distance that your robot drives. This distance will be bigger the larger your wheels are, but having wheels as small as possible isn't the solution because then your robot would drive painfully slow. After lots of testing, we have found that these wheels are the best sweet spot. Now for the sensor placement. We have two downwards facing light sensors in the front two corners of the robot. Having them in that arrangement means that we have a very wide range side to side of where we can look for or follow lines. For example, we can follow this line here, 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 or here. Then we have a gyroscope in the exact pivot point of our robot. Having it there reduces the amount of movement that it experiences as much as possible, which reduces the possibility of gyro drift. Lastly is a third color sensor right here, which we use to detect which attachment is on top of the robot based on the color of this plate. Once the robot knows which attachment is seated, it cues the corresponding program onto the center brick button, which completely eliminates searching through the brain for program. Here's a short video of our third color sensor in action at our state tournament. As you can see, all we have to do is put the attachment on top and then press the button. The last key design feature is having a build plate on top that firmly secures attachments to the robot while also letting them easily be taken on or off. A great way of accomplishing this is by having lots of upwards facing axles go into downwards facing handholds. It is also really important to have a reliable way of taking power from your media motors up to the top of your robot and then from the top of your robot into the attachment. For example, here's the internal gear train of our media motors inside of Storm 10. And then the gears on top are held together so it is physically impossible for them to skip. Now, how do you design your own successful robot chassis? Our number one tip is to use a LEGO 3D modeling software because it drastically reduces the amount of time it takes to build and make modifications. For example, taking out this piece in real life would require disassembling the entire robot, whereas with the 3D model, it's only a few clicks. We use a free program called Studio, which we've linked in the description, but there are many more out there. Studio, however, is compatible across both Mac and Windows and doesn't use any external parts library, so it's very simple to just install. So using a 3D design program, also means that you can make as many separate iterations as you want without actually building them all, which would take a lot of time and be very inefficient. For example, Stormageddon Mark 5, Mark 7, and Mark 9 never actually got fully built, but we were still able to learn from those designs and improve off of them. This transitions perfectly into my second tip, which was to make many iterations. We started out with this. Wire sticking out everywhere and super messy, but we didn't give up and we designed 16 different robots until we came to the robot that we use now. A huge part of designing a successful robot is trial and error, so don't get frustrated if you aren't able to design your dream robot right away. You will learn from everything that you design, which will just make your designs better and better. Next is a completely overbuild. Get to the point where you've added way too many internal connections and then add more because the last thing you want to do is to finally build your robot in real life and have it be all mushy. That's one of the few downsides to building in a computer because it's very difficult to tell how structurally solid your robot's gonna be. So just add as many internal supports as you can because there's no downside. One way that we make sure that our robots are as structurally solid as possible is by designing a central core out of our motors that we know is very strong and then building out to the rest of the chassis from there. Lastly, make sure there is space for wires inside of your design and also 
also an opening for both the power port and the data port on your EV3 brain. You should make notes in your building directions of when you should put the wires in because it will be impossible to do at the end. In fact, it's probably best to connect them as early on as you can in the building process. One of our training teams had to completely rebuild their robot three times because they couldn't get the wires in and I can guarantee you they did not have fun doing that. That's all for today. Feel free to ask any questions you have in the comments below.